All right, guys. So, so today is Monday, October 10th. Happy Monday. We're doing our level up training. And today we're going to do a mock buyer presentation. Uh, Mai on our team has volunteered to do the buyer presentation. And this is her chance to just write a presentation with all of us watching. I'm and you're be, recording uh, it. And it's being recorded. Perfect. So you can go back and watch it and look at it and check it out. And, um, you know, level up your skills today, but you're going to walk me through the whole, as if I'm just a random person, right? I'm a client. We booked the Zoom consultation. You're doing a buyer presentation. I want you to walk me from start to finish, um, you know, on, on how you would do the buyer presentation. And then we'll give you some feedback. I'll take some notes um, and feel free to, you know, elaborate or expand as much as possible, right? Or you can even condense stuff if you want. Um, but we're looking to see how you would do the buyer presentation. What I'm looking for just, to, for you guys is I'm looking for, does she know the information, right? Has she studied it? Has she memorized it? Has she read it? Um, is she building rapport with me, right? Is she connecting with me? Um, you know, not just spitting a bunch of info and, you know, and just kind of having me gloss over. So is she keeping me engaged in the conversation? In, you know, so it's it's knowing the info and then also knowing how to deliver the info in a way that keeps the client engaged. So, um, and just to give you a little scenario, so I'm a first time home buyer. I'm looking to buy a home in San Jose for a million dollars. I got a 10% down payment. Never bought a home before, been renting for a while. Uh, I work in tech. So kind of your typical buyer profile, first time home buyer. I have some money, but not a ton of money. And I'm looking to get into my first home, whether it's a townhouse or single family um, and go from there. That was a lot of information. <laughs> uh, all right. You said first time home buyer, San Jose, 1 million works in tech, townhouse, single family home. Um, are you purchasing by yourself or? Purchasing by myself, yeah. I'm purchasing by myself. I'm in. Uh, I'm engaged. I'm not married yet. I'm engaged. So, I'm buying this home by myself, though. But <laughs> okay, if things go well. She'll move in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. <sighs> And feel free to share your screen, do whatever you got to do, whatever you're going to show me. Okay. So three, no. two, one, action. Let's go. Hi, Enrique. It's so nice to finally meet you. Congratulations on your engagement. How did that go? How was the proposal? Give me all the tea. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's good <laughs> to meet you. My, uh, yeah, it went good. Uh, honestly, it was just a little nervous with the whole thing, but uh, we had a nice little weekend getaway and made the proposal and uh, she said yes. And Thank goodness. So, yeah, I'm excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Had me, uh, had me nervous for a second, but uh, we're still, it's still a slow thing. You know, it's still going to be, you know, far out, maybe a year or two down the line, but at least just kind of making those next steps. Oh yeah. Thanks for, for asking. Sure. <laughs> no worries. I used to be a videographer, so I was always around like weddings. So weddings get me really excited and I like to talk about it. So if you need some inspiration, feel free to hit me up and maybe I'll give you some tips or whatever <laughs> for your reception. <laughs> I would love that because that's honestly not my strong area. Yeah, that's not my strong I'm suit. Here. I, I I'm here. I'm here as a realtor and also your, I guess, wedding planner or whatever, <laughs> unofficial official. <laughs> All cool, right, Enrique. Thank you. So before we get started on our buyer consultation, is there any questions that you would like for for me to go over or for, or focus on today? Um, you know, I I definitely want to buy. I'm ready to make that move. I've been renting for a long time. I've saved up money, but I you know you hear so much stuff in the news, whether it's a good time, a bad time, and. I just want to know that I'm, you know, it's, I'm making the right decision and, you know, if it's like a good time to buy, or if, if you honestly think I should buy now or wait, or like what your thoughts are on that. Um, you know, cause I, I don't have a problem waiting, but I also don't want to keep throwing my money away to rent. Cause I know that's not 
helping me in the long run. So, and then just making sure, um, yeah, just, just making sure I'm informed, you know, and, you know, cause I'm pretty new to all this. Gotcha. So you're saying that you are renting currently. Um, are you renting month to month or is it an annual lease? Uh, it's month to month now. Two years, but it's already month to month. So the, the landlord's pretty cool. I mean, I have a good relationship with them. Okay, perfect. That will make it a bit easier during like the whole process and especially for moving. And you mentioned that you are not so sure if right now is the right time to purchase. And that's understandable. That's like a question that all of my buyers or clients have been wondering too. But honestly, Enrique, um, whether if it's the right time to purchase, it's pretty pretty much ultimately up to you and what your priorities, right? Um, so I would say I will touch it touch on it a little bit later during the market update, uh, kind of give you the overview of what's happening. But as for um, if it's a good time to buy, I feel like if you are financially stable and it is something that you've been wanting to do, there it is, it would be a good time to buy just because there is a lot of opportunities right out in the market. Okay, okay, good. Perfect. And today I will be giving you a lot of information. So it might be a little bit overwhelming, um, but don't worry. We'll, uh, it's mostly going to be an overview so that you should uh, be able to expect or understand what's going to happen during the process. But once we are actually going through the process, I'll elaborate on it a little bit more. And I'll be also sending you a copy of our presentation so that at the very end, so that you always have the information to refer back to. Oh, okay, cool. All right, that sounds good. Perfect. I am going to be sharing my screen with you. Uh, one moment. I'm having some technical difficulty. Perfect. Can you see my screen, Ricky? Yeah. Perfect. So just to let you know a little bit more about our team and what, um, so that you know you're in great hands, our team is PureG Realistic and we're brokered by EXP. This is our team website. You, you can see here, this is our co-founder. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see our sales team. So this is all of our real estate agents, uh, all of our ISA. There is about probably about 40 people on our team now. We're um, expanding fairly quickly. And down here is our client fair coordinator. So um, our team have had over 15 years of experience. We have closed over 500 transactions to date. And we also have 500 five-star reviews on Google and Zillow. Let me go to our Zillow page. Let's take me here. Um, this is where you can see all of our reviews. And if you scroll down here, this will show you all of our listing and sales that we've done. We, if you go here, we can see that we are mostly focused in the Bay Area and Santa Clara County. However, we have gone out as far as, you know, Modesto and Manteca and all the way south to Hollister too. So wherever you may be looking to, we may be able to help you. And we, and because we have over 500 stars, um, 500 five-star reviews on Google and Zillow, that allows us to be Zillow Premier Agents, Redfin Partner, and Realtor.com partners as well. But not everyone is able to partner up with these companies. Only a handful of handpicked teams are selected to be their partners, which allows us to have access to more listings than most agents in the area. And because we are in the top 10 producing agents in the area, that also allows us to be in the, um, the top agent network, which is a website where the top agents in the area post their off-market listings. Now, Enrique, are you familiar with off-market listings? Uh, no, how, how does that work? All righty, so there's pretty much two sides of real estate, the on-market and also off-market. So on-market properties are public market 
public properties listed on home search sites such as Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, and that are sourced from the MLS. Hello? Now, off-market properties are privately listed properties Hello? and are coming soon that only certain agents have access to. So basically, for whatever reason, a seller may want to sell their home off-market for privacy concerns and doesn't want the public to know. Um, so this will also give you an advantage since there will not be as many um, competition uh, since there's not a lot of people that have access to these properties, which will also save you money. Uh, does, that, does that make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're, you're able to show me some of these also? Yes. So we will give this to our clients. So this is only exclusively for um, the, our clients. Um, Okay, Sorry, cool, cool. All right, I'm going moving forward with the presentation. So we also have experience in mortgage. So in our office, we have our preferred in-house lenders that we share a space with and trust. So just to clarify, we are two separate entities but we do share a space and work very closely together. They are a brokerage, so instead of being loyal to just one bank, they actually work with 40 other banks to find you the best program for your unique situation. So the communication between our realtors and lenders are really great. And so if you ever have any questions about the lending side, we can always have um, find the answer for you. Okay, thank you. Oh. Okay, awesome. And Enrique, we are also members of the National, the California and Santa Clara Associations of Realtors. Okay. So this allows us to network with other agents from all over the country as well. Yeah. It's super important that we stay connected with all the top agents in the area so that we can build relationship and also get more information about what sellers are expecting. Yeah. Any questions oh, okay. before I move forward? Okay. Yeah, like what's your mortgage? Uh uh, guys, because I got pre-approved through my bank, through Chase, but um, like in your experience, do your does your guys get like uh, better deals or better rates or what have you seen? Um, it all depends. Um, like I said, you know, when you're working with your own banks, they might give you a discount on interest rates just because you have your money with their bank, but they have um, kind of like a restricted um, policy and requirements that you have to follow. Whereas with our um, lenders, they're going to be able to kind of shop around the different 40 banks to see what exactly what programs is best for you and see what you're eligible for. So I would highly recommend you speaking mm. to um, our lender just to see what your options are. Got it, at least like compare, compare them. Mm -hmm. It'd be best to compare. Okay, all right, sounds good. Perfect, so moving on. So most of our agents here at PRG are full-time agents. So we are in the market every single day. Um, we also have weekly meetings where we all gather to discuss what we've been seeing on the market and uh, going over different current scenarios just to make sure that we are up to date with the market. And aside from that, we also do have weekly trainings to polish our skill set and to also go over stats to see what the new trends are. And again, our reputation and network really helps our buyers because listing agents are more likely to accept our offer over other agents that they are not familiar with since they know that they have a great agent on the other side of the transaction. So the unique thing about PRG Real Estate is that we are a team model. So um, usually I have a senior. So I would say, as you can see, we have two um, real estate agents on our call. Today, so let's say if I'm busy or on vacation or unfortunately I'm sick, uh, my partner can help you. Uh, and if we are both unavailable, we actually do have 40 other team members on our team that are um, experienced and we trust, who we trust that can also show you homes so that you really never miss an opportunity in this market. Okay, cool, yeah, that's important. I heard like some, if it's a good like house, it, it usually goes pretty fast, right? Yes, um, especially if it's in a great neighborhood and uh, great schools, usually those homes sell a little bit quicker and there's a bit more competition. So uh, in the sense where we're um, in a really hot market, we just want to make sure that we never miss an opportunity. 
Mm, okay. So another thing that you should do is also view us as a resource to you. So we have so many vendors and resources that we trust that offer great services and prices. So if you ever need a handyman, a painter, CPA, contractor, or whatever the case may be, we will probably have someone in mind. So feel free to reach out um, and ask us. Do you have any questions about that or this section before we move on? No, um, no, all sounds pretty good. Yeah, sounds good so far. Perfect. So now that you know a little bit about us and what my team does, uh, it's kind of my time to get to know you um, and what you're looking for. Um, so just to recap, I know this is going to be your first time purchasing a home. Um, you're looking for something in San Jose uh, within a million dollars. What are you looking for? What's important to you during this process? Um, I think just kind of what we touched on in the beginning, just making sure like, you know, it's a good time and like I get the best deal possible. Um, you know, I know I've heard that the market's kind of slowed down. So, but then the interest rates have gone up. So I just want to make sure I get the best deal. Mm -hmm. Being informed, because like I said, I'm pretty new to this. I know a little bit. I've done a little bit of online research, but uh, I just want to make sure like if I have a question, like it could be answered, you know, in a timely manner and stuff like that. Yeah, I totally understand, especially being a first time home buyer. I know there's a lot of information thrown at you and sometimes you can get lost, which is why it's really important for us to work with you guys just so we can help guide you through the process. And because we are a team model, uh, myself and me and my partner will always be available to answer your questions. So that's one of the perks of having two real estate agents helping you. And then awesome. what is okay. important to you when it comes to your agent? Um, you know, someone who's like, you know, informative, you know, they know what they're doing, you know, communication is definitely key. Like I'm pretty busy at work all day. So, um, you know, I do like text or, or email or, so just someone that I can, you know, if I have a question, I just want to make sure they respond in a timely manner. Because sometimes I might be in between meetings and I need to an answer or something. Um, mm -hmm. And just someone who like just follows through, you know, and make sure that, you know, they, they follow through with what they say. Perfect. Uh, sounds like you're just trying to find and um, get a bit more information, a little bit more guidance about the process and communication is really important to you. So is text and email will be your preferred method of communication? Yeah, I mean, I pretty much live on my phone, so I have my phone on me at all times. So yeah, uh, whether it's a text or an email, I got notifications going off. So yeah, text is really good. You text me, like I usually respond pretty quickly. Uh, gotcha. It makes sense since you're in tech. Yeah, that would probably be one of the reasons why. <laughs> Yeah. And also just want to touch on what your timeline for purchase is like. I know you just got engaged. I know the wedding is like in a year, but when are you guys planning to purchase a home or move in by? Um, I mean, honestly, as soon as possible, I, uh, if it's a good deal and, and we like the house and it all makes sense, then I'm pretty much, you know, in the next couple months I'm ready. Um, I don't have a specific timeline, but you know, we found a good home like this month and yeah, I'm, I think I'm ready. All right, perfect. That sounds good. I will keep an eye out to see if there's any properties that are within your criteria. In the meantime, we'll move on to the market review. And Ruge, what have you heard about the market and what do you think is happening? Um, I, I just pretty much see like CNN and like, just you know online google and stuff uh it just it seems like the it's slowing down like it seems like the market's a little slower and there's not as many uh not as much competition at least that's what i heard but i don't know if that's true or if that's just certain areas or um yeah but i i know one of my friends bought a house a month ago my coworker, and he said you know there was a couple offers on the house so I'm not, I'm honestly, I'm not too sure because they say the market might crash. So it's kind of all over the place when I watch the news. 
Yeah, the news, there's so much information thrown at you, but this is, I'm going to tell you what's actually happening in the market. But so um, people always ask me, like you mentioned earlier, is this a good time to buy? Well, it all depends on you and what you're looking for. Um, what is your motivation to purchase and how long you're planning to live in that property, right? So historically and statistically, if you're planning to live in a property for five years and up, you'll most likely gain equity. So if you're planning to purchase short term, unfortunately, I do not have the crystal ball, so I cannot tell you um, what will happen within a year or two. But in all healthy markets, you will see healthy dips to help stabilize the market. However, if you do end up living in a property for at least five years and you're financially stable and ready, it would definitely be a great opportunity for you to buy now, especially since there are a lot more opportunities for buyers right now. So right now, there are more uh, inventory compared to the previous, year, previous years, so buyers have a lot more options to choose from. And right now, homes are also um, reducing its, uh, its list price. So homes are listed closer to its true value right now. And depending on the area that you're looking into, there is less competition. With interest rates are always, always fluctuating. Right now, it's probably around mid-6 to all the way up to mid-7. Um, but you will definitely want to check with the lender for that. So a good thing is that you can always refinance when interest rates drop. So you want to marry your purchase price and date your interest rate. Inter interest rates change, but your purchase price doesn't. So with a lower purchase price, you can always save on property tax. And not to mention, you can always write off your mortgage interest. So, however, you would definitely want to check in with your lender or tax person on that. Do you have any questions about okay. the market? Does, does that kind of answer your question, Enrique? Yeah, I mean, that that makes sense. Um, yeah, it seems like maybe the news is like making it more than it is, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, it all just depends on your unique situation, right? All right, so moving on to the next point, we'll go over the home buying roadmap. So right now, or there are three phases in the home buying process. So the first is finding your home, second is going to escrow, and lastly, it's closing of escrow. So right now we are in phase one. So this is where we do our initial consultation and get to um, know each other a little bit better and what your priorities and goals are. And we will then also determine how we'll work together um, and help you get your finances together. So getting your finances together is going to be the most important part of the process, which is why the sooner you get your pre-approval done, the sooner we can get the ball rolling. Um, since this is going to determine your price range and the type of properties that you will be that will be available to you. So after you get your pre-approval done, um, now that now, now comes the fun part, the home shopping. So once you find uh, or identify a property that you love, we're going to go over disclosures uh, together and review comps so that you can make the best competitive offer that makes sense to you. We'll also do our best to negotiate the best price and terms for you as well. So once we get our offer accepted, that's, um, that will take us into phase two, which will be the escrow period. So escrow is a third intermediary company that works between the seller and buyer to make sure that both parties have fulfilled their contractual obligations before they re release anything to the other side. So all of your deposit will stay with the escrow company. Once the escrow period is over, they will then release everything. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to kind of scroll down um, to a sample of what the escrow timeline will look like, just so you have a kind of a better understanding. So day zero is when you get your offer accepted. Within three days of, um, within three days, your earnest money deposit is due by wire or cashier check. So your earnest money deposit is also known as your EMD. It is a show of good faith to show shelter to show sellers that you are a serious buyer. So in California, you um, it is 3% of your purchase price. And to make your offer more competitive, you can also choose to send in your EMD within 24 hours after getting your offer accepted. But we can always discuss it a little bit more when we um, get 
to this part of the process. Well, your EMD is also, um, and I just want to let you know that your EMD is a portion of your total down payment. So for example, if you decide to put down 20% of your down payment, you would put the initial 3% of your earnest money deposit and then followed by the 17. Um, so you don't pay the additional 3%. It's gonna be 20% in total. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah, so it's just like putting like some money up front to mm -hmm. what my offer, okay. Yes, kind of like a pre-down payment, if you think of it in that sense. Got it, and then okay. Also, mm -hmm, and a way to protect your e d you can also choose to write an offer with contingencies. Are you familiar with what contingencies are? Uh, not, I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't really know too much. And that's what I was going to ask. Like once I put my deposit, is it what happens? Like if I change my mind or is it refundable or how does that work? Yes. So if you put in your offer, um, that with no contingencies, um, then you will put your EMD as at risk because this is showing the seller that you're a serious um, buyer and you're, you don't have any plans of backing out. However, um, you can decide to put contingencies into the offer and that will kind of protect your EMD. So contingencies are pretty much legal ways for you to back out of your contract within a set period of time. But I will go over it in detail after reviewing the timeline. Oh, okay. Yeah, so let's say you decide to put all three contingencies in your offer. You have about a week to get inspections done and if, in, in, if inspections were not done by the sellers. And then you have within 14 days to also get your loan and an appraisal in order. And if everything checks off, you can remove it during that per time period. So now you would definitely want to rest your wrists and hands because on day 25, you'll be signing a lot of paperwork. <laughs> and this is when all the loan docs are signed. Day 27 is when we do a final walkthrough. This is when we go back to the property to ensure that this uh, that it is in the same condition when we uh, first got our offer accepted. So most of the time, homes are being staged when we first view it. So after the removal of staging, we just want to make sure that there were no damages that happened during the process. Day 29 or the day before escrow is closed, the loan is funded. Day 30 is when escrow is closed and recorded and we hand over your keys and celebrate because you are a new homeowner. Nice, All right. okay. Yes, so I'm just gonna go back to the contingencies just to kind of explain it a little bit more. So like I mentioned earlier, contingencies are legal ways for you to back out of your contract within a certain amount of time. And it is also a way for you to get your EMD back. So there are conditions that, so they are pretty much conditions that are, that must be taken care of by either the seller or buyer before you are able to more, move forward in the transaction. So during the process, there are three main contingencies that you will probably come by. That is the inspection, the appraisal and loan contingencies. So the inspection contingency is pretty much the least utilized in the current market right now because most sellers are already providing us with the reports uh, from the very beginning and saying, hey, this is what the condition of the house is and you should factor it into the price and then let's move forward. If the sellers did not order inspections, we'll go ahead and say, yes, this is the amount that we want to purchase your home for, but we need about 10 days for some inspectors to come out and see what's going on with the property. And if they find something that's unexpected within that period, we can go ahead to negotiate, get some credits, come to an agreement and move forward. Or we can say, hey, I did not expect this to happen. We can't come to an agreement and I'm going to back out of the contract. I'm still within my contingency period so we can take our EMD back and continue shopping. That, that, was that a little bit more helpful once we kind of break it down a little bit? Yeah, so do we have to have a contingency? Do you recommend? Because that sounds like it protect my money, right? Yes, um, I would definitely recommend doing so. 
unless like um, I mentioned earlier, if it's already provided um, by the seller, you can always review the disclosures to see if you're okay with all the damages and repairs. If you're not okay, we can always put the, the inspection contingencies there just to protect you. Got it. Okay. Perfect. So appraisal contingency. So what are, whatever house you buy, the lender is going to um, require that you get an appraisal done on the property. So this is a third party company who will go out and assess the value of the home just to make sure that the bank's investment of the home is safe. And they want to know that you're offering a price that's a reasonable range of the current market value. And if there is a difference uh, in the purchase price um, you offered and the appraisal value, then you as the buyer is responsible for that difference if you have waived the contingency. On the other hand, if you have the appraisal contingency and there's a difference, you can go back to um, the seller and negotiate the negotiate and come to an agreement or back out to get your 3% back. Got it. Do you have okay. any questions with the appraisal? No. So basically we do an appraisal and then and if it doesn't come in, then we can go back and try to negotiate. Yeah, that's only if you put the contingency in. If you didn't put the contingency in, then you will be responsible for the difference. Oh, God. Does that ever happen? Like, we got to pay the difference? Yes. Um, sometimes, if you know, in a hot market and you're offering something crazy out there and a prisoner comes out and um, they assess the, the value of the home and it d doesn't appraise for the amount that you appraised for or you offered for, then you have to pay for the difference because lenders or the bank will only um, loan you the amount that the property is um, appraised for. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to pay pay more if I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, we'll do a research, look up, um, go over cons just to make sure where the market's at and what price would um, be best for us to put an offer. So okay. loan contingency. So during this period, we will talk and work closely with the lender. They will be making sure that all your finances are where they should be verify your work history, loan to value is um, good. So during this time of escrow, um, there are some things that you should absolutely not do. So you do not want to max out your credit cards. You do not want to open a new line of credit and you do not want to make any big purchases. You want to make sure you close be first before you um, do any home appliances or furniture shopping on your credit card and not to um, have any large deposits coming in without discussing it with your lenders ahead of time, just because that would raise a red flag, red flag to the bank and they will start questioning you where that money is coming from. Got it, okay. Yeah, so if there's anything that is financially related, you just wanna make sure you speak with the lender ahead of time. Other might, otherwise, you might be risking your loan altogether. Any questions about that? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, it's just a lot. It's a lot, a lot of info. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's a lot to um, go through, but like I mentioned, it's going to be an overview. Just make sure um, that you're aware of what's going to happen, and I'm always going to send this over to you so you can always go back to review it. Okay. So we're heading towards the end of the consultation. So this is our VIP loyalty program. So as your VIP buyer specialist, we will, these are pretty much the promises that we are going to do for you. So we'll help you secure the best financing program for your specific situation with the best interest rate and least expensive um, closing costs and have you, your and have a proof qualification or pre-approval certificates generated um, to give you an advantage to um, in your home purchase. We'll, we'll, we will provide you with regular updates on all of the new properties that match your home buying criteria, including um, both on-market and off-market listings. We'll arrange private showings to any properties that you want to see, including new construction coming soon, 
for sale by owner and properties that are off market. So with new construction though, um, I would recommend if you are interested in new construction, I would recommend for you to let me know so that I can go out with you just so you have um, a, a buyer or an agent to represent you. Just because if you go by yourself, everyone that works at the development is working for the, the builder. So they will only have the builder's best interests. So just to um, have your best interest, it's best for um, me to come with you. Got it, okay. And then we will also discuss the best strategy to um, make an offer as well as financing terms, interest rates, costs to close, possession date, inspection reports, repair estimates, and any questions that you may have. We will present, prepare and present an offer with terms and contingencies that protect your interests. Um, recommend qualified vendors, like I mentioned earlier, and partners that can help you with your home purchase, including legal advice, tax advice, home re renovations, home warranties, hazard and title insurance. And we, of, of course, we will deliver five-star um, service and have a member of our team always available to answer any of your questions that you may have. So there are some bonuses uh, if you were to work with us as well. Did you have a question, Enrique? No, no, I was just trying to um, trying to understand all that because kind of went a little little fast. Um, okay, I'm reading that there. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. And you'll send me a copy of this, right? Yes, I will send you a copy at the end of our presentation. Okay. Yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to stop me, and I can kind of break it down to you, or you can feel free to text me or email you email me, and I'll get back to you as well. Okay. So bonus number one is a one-year home warranty. That is a $650 value. We will, we will negotiate the warranty on your behalf at no cost to you if the seller does not pay. So if the seller does not pay, I will pay this out of pocket. Bonus number two is our cancellation guarantee, which allows you to cancel the agreement at any time if we do not live up to our promises. Bonus number three is a very unique perk that you get that I haven't really seen anywhere else. Bonus number three is our sell for free guarantee, which guarantees you that if you're unhappy with your purchase, for any reason within 12 months, we will sell your home and waive our listing commission. So there are conditions that apply. This would not apply for a flip property if you're trying to find something that needs work um, for profit. And then we, you will still need to pay the buyer's agent. Got it, okay. Bonus number four is, um, I'm not quite sure if you know how commission works in California, Enrique, but you do not pay as a commission. Commissions are paid by the sellers and negotiated as part as the purchase agreement. And then there is also a uh, 995 admin fee that is due at closing to EXP Realty for internal processing of your transaction. So you don't pay anything upfront and this is still part of your closing costs at the close of escrow. So this fee does not go to myself. It does not go to um, my, my partner and it does not, um, it goes to our transaction coordinator, which is Melissa Noon. So she is a vital part of this transaction. She makes sure that all the T's are crossed, all of our I's are dotted cor like correctly. And she also makes sure that we are on top of our contractual timeline and all the important documents are complete correctly and fully submitted. So there are a lot of properties, oh, sorry, there are a lot of parties involved in our transaction. So we have the sellers, the listing agent, um, the buyers, buyers agent, escrow, lenders, um, title company that are involved. So ultimately, Melissa is here to legally protect you and make sure that the, the transaction runs smoothly. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we Ricky, that- want to use- do we have to use that person, Melissa? Um, I would highly um, recommend you we use Melissa just because um, we've worked with her with so many transactions and she's amazing. She's always on top of it. 
on top of her work, she is super responsive and works super quickly. So she's going to be a very vital part of the process. Got it. Okay. Okay. All righty. So this pretty much concludes our consultation for today. And I will, like I say, I will be sending over the presentation over DocuSign so that you have a copy to refer to um, whenever you have any questions. Okay. Do you have any questions for me, Enrique? Um, I know we covered a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's no, it, it all sounded good. Yeah, my, you like explained everything really well. I mean, it, it all sounds definitely great. Um, yeah, I like how you were so thorough. You answered all my questions. I just think I'd probably want to uh, maybe read it over and kind of, you know, see all these details. Uh, is this something mm -hmm. we have to sign today or how does that work? Um, I would recommend you do sign it just because, you know, it's kind of like an indication that you are working with me. So then I can put my time aside to really focus on you. Um, but then again, um, whenever you're, you know, ready to, um, you're ready for the home buying process, um, you can sign it after. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to send it over to me, and I can look at it and then I can get back to you. Okay. Yeah, I will do that shortly. In the meantime, um, do you have some time, um, some some free time this week for us to view some property that you may be interested in? Uh um yeah maybe on the weekend like on saturday or, or in the afternoon or sunday afternoon okay and we saturday afternoon i would saturday at 12 p.m work for you uh let me see my calendar real quick yeah yeah 12 maybe one o'clock yeah, one o'clock work. And I can just okay. add a few properties that, that fits your criteria, just so you have something to compare to and see what you like and not like. And then, um, you know, just trying to figure out what you're looking for. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, sounds good. My, yeah, go ahead and send that over to me and then I'm gonna look at it today, uh, this evening. And then, and then, and then if everything looks good, I'll just go ahead and sign it and send it back and then we can, uh, I guess Saturday at one o'clock, we can go see some houses. And then I guess maybe just send me a list of houses. You know, yeah. you kind of seen the ones that I, I'm looking for. Okay, perfect. What's, the bottom, uh, what's that next page cancellation guarantee or what does that mean? Yeah, it's just to reiterate that um, our agreement is, um, uh, you, can, <laughs> you can cancel at any time if I do not uh, live up to my promises. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Perfect. So I will send you a Google invite for our um, showing at 1 p.m. on Saturday. I hope to see you and maybe you can bring your fiance and then we can probably, you know, mingle a little bit and get to know you, get to know each other a little bit more. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Mai. You're so All welcome. Right. And, uh, it was a Rose pleasure. Cole. Oh my god. End of role play, guys. End of role play. Uh you can stop uh I'll stop sharing your screen. All right, first let's give it up for my guys. Give it up for my my uh, this is gonna be a great learning lesson for you because we recorded all this. You're gonna be able to watch it back. Um I was taking notes. So when I was writing stuff down, I was taking notes on on just things that stood out to me. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> you know, so uh real quick guys in in the chat give me some feedback if you guys got like 10 minutes give, give me 10 minutes and we'll wrap this up because i want to give her some feedback um what stood out to you guys that you think my did really good what what do you think she did really well put that in the chat
Thomas said, that ice breaking rapport was excellent. I agree 100%. She talked about the fiance. I like that you talked about your videographer. Like, dude, that was money right there. Like, one way to like get me to trust you and connect with you. That's actually what uh, I did to Jessica one of my clients. Said, like, yeah. On Zill I mean, Flex, I did it on the call. And then he was like, yeah, I'll definitely reach out if I need anything um, for any recommendation for writing. Sounds like, cool. <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. My good job on that. Uh, Jessica wrote, I like how she asked the client what they think is going on with the market. Yeah, getting feedback from the client before you tell them what's happening. You want to ask them, what do they think is happening? That was a great tactic there because it set the stage for how to answer my concerns. Um, super informative, pacing, excellent rapport. She didn't go on too long and always asked if you understood everything. Yeah, so taking the time to pause and ask if I understood was excellent after each page you pretty much said hey does that make sense do you have any questions so the pacing was was really good uh anything else guys anything else you can add on what you think she did well okay awesome um so let me give you some feedback Maya, and this is all for you guys to take notes as well um my my overall impression overall i would i would say it was really solid like there was a lot of things that you did well the energy level was great uh, your tonality you know your bubbliness like your personality definitely shined and you made me feel super comfortable I think one of the best things that you did was the rapport that you built in the beginning of just before we even got into it you started asking me about the the uh, engagement and the photo shoot, all those things. Like to me, that was hands down, like one of the smartest things you could have done because that instantly turned you from just realtor to now like someone that could be a friend or someone that I may be able to confide in when I need some tips for, you know, how to do this wedding thing, right? Like it just separated you from another agent. Uh, so I think you did a really, really good job on that. Um, being able to pull up the different uh, tabs and explain, you know, our reviews and all that stuff. I think you did a really, really good job on that. Um, just overall, I think your overall presentation was, was, was really good. Like the personality is probably the biggest thing. And that's one thing I want to point out to you guys is that it's not necessarily what you say, it's how you say it, right? Of course, you want to go through all the information, but if you're just kind of reading through that thing and there's no personality, no tonality, you're not making the client feel warm and welcome and engaged and heard, like it's it's not going to be a great presentation. They can zone out really quick, but when you're able to connect and laugh and ask questions and like dig a little deeper on what's important, that's really where it becomes you know, there's that rapport and that connection and that chemistry being built. And that's what you want to shoot for. Um, and I got, these are all mostly things that, uh, that I want to give you to work on. This is homework and I'll text this to you as well. My, um, I wrote down reassurance when I have a concern, how to frame the value versus my concern. So one of the things, and this is a tactic, right? One of the things that I told you was when you asked me what's important to me and I said, you know, I want to be informed, you know, I want to make sure time to buy all that stuff. You answered my concern, but I think you could have framed it in a different way. Um, you, I don't think you went deep enough with addressing what my concern was like, Hey, I hear you. That's understandable. You might've said that a little bit, but what I would have done if I were you is I would say, hey, that's completely understandable, but let me show you how I work. Let me show you how I treat my clients. Or let me give you a perspective of how I treat my clients. You know, when, when you're working with me, like I want to make sure you're fully informed. I want to make sure I'm, we're texting. We have an open conversation. If you have a question, like there's no questions that are dumb. Like I want to make sure that I'm giving you updates several times throughout the week. You know, this is how I run my business. Right. And I think that was an opportunity for you to make a statement of who you are and what you bring to the table, because a lot of it was just talking about the team and the overall company and the big picture. But I think you got to let them know who my is and what your unique values are as an agent. Right. Instead of just kind of like the generic kind of answer, 
that would have been your chance to say like, hey, this is why you want to work with me. This is what separates me from other agents that you go work with out there. Um, because then that would have really reassured me right there, right? Like you kind of touched on it, but I don't, you touched on it on the surface, but I don't think you went like, like powerful enough in like selling it to me. Does that make sense, Mai? Oh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so let's role play that real quick, right? So you asked me what's important to me in this process. So uh, my, you know, I just, um, you know, I, I want to buy, you know, I, I save money and I've been renting. I don't want to throw my money away to rent. You know, I'm just, you see in the news, like if it's a good time to buy or not, the market seems like it's all over. And then also, I just want to make sure I'm informed. And like, you know, I work with an agent who just keeps me up to date, you know, because I've heard, you know, there's some bad agents out there who never get back to their clients. And like, those are kind of the things that, you know, I'm, I'm concerned with. Yeah, Enrique, I totally understand. Um, I know a lot of people that was on in your same boat as well. As for me, I'm always available for my clients. So communications is also a very big thing for me too. So as you have expectation of me with communication, I do have expectation for you as well to have that communication and that honesty that we're looking for just so we are on the same page. So throughout the process, I'm here to guide you through the process. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to contact me and I'm always going to be here to answer those questions. There you go. See, so like right there, you went a little deeper, right? And like you sold me and you convinced me and you reassured me. And I don't think you did that the first time. So yeah. that's one of the things that I would make a mental note is anytime the client has a concern, address it, but then kind of give them that heart to heart, right? Like, Hey, this is what I prom This is my promise to you, or this is how I work. And you're kind of setting the expectation. And I think it'll, it'll be a lot more effective. Um, okay. The next thing I wrote down was team model. You kept, you referred to the team model and you got out of the role play a couple of times. You said, I'd have a senior agent here normally or whatever. Right. That was one of the things you said. Um, yeah. One of the things I just want to let you know is they're not, there's not always going to be two agents, right? Like in yeah. this situation, you're the senior agent, you're by yourself. Right. So don't say there's always going to be two agents involved, but let the client know that you have a whole team of agents to back you up in case yeah. anything you know in case you need help or anything like that right so i would just rephrase the way i say that uh, especially since going forward the goal is that you're doing these on your own own you're not having a senior right this is your you're you're trying to become the senior agent right mm -hmm. that makes sense mm -hmm. um yeah so just that's just a note um I wrote good energy, very thorough. I liked how you covered everything. You were super thorough with, with everything. Um, here's a little small tactical thing that I would do for you, uh, that I would recommend is when you started the presentation, uh, you started, the tab that you showed me first was like the team tab, the one that had my picture. Yeah. Right? And Ricky, me, and Ricky. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't start off with that tab. Like I would have my buyer presentation as the okay. first thing. And I would have that as like the main tab that I start with. And then as I go those things, then I would click on the other tabs and show them that tab. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you didn't show me the buyer presentation until like later on in the presentation. And then you showed me that tab. So it was kind of like, I don't know, like it, it kind of was a little out of order, I think. Um, you started talking about the team, um, uh, first before going, before you like, you kind of went out of order a little bit on the, on the, on the thing. I don't know mm -hmm. if that was intentional or, or if that's just the way someone else showed you. For what, for which part? So the intro? instead of like starting off with my presentation, you started off showing me the Zillow or the, the website with the team page. Right. Oh yeah, that's that's what I've done for myself. <laughs> because like okay. when we do the introduction, we're we're going with like our team, right? It says like our team has fifteen years, over fifteen years of experience, and like five hundred over five hundred transactions and five hundred five star reviews. So I just wanted to like, like I guess, provide the visuals to kind of back up what I'm saying during that time. Got it. So. All I'm asked, all I'm recommending you do is just like 
start with the, the buyer presentation page first. And then as you go down the bullet points, then click on the tab that you want to show the illustration. Yeah. Instead of the other way around. Just because okay. I think visually, like me as me as the as the uh, client, visually, it just made more sense that way. Like I was kind of lost, like, oh, and then you went to this, it kind of jumped around too much. Okay. Um one of the things too, and this is not this is not in the presentation, but I would tell uh, I would start off the presentation by telling the client about you, like your bio. And maybe this is something we need to add, or you could just work that in because I didn't you didn't tell me much about you. You told me about the whole team, but who is my, right? So like I would say who what's your bio, my, like I would start off by talking about myself. Hey, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in business for this long or, you know, regardless, right. Or I've been involved in this many transactions or I've been working with this team for this long, or I grew up in this area or I graduated from this school or my background was in this before real estate. This is what I like to do on my spare time. Like, because that breaks the ice, right. I'm trying to get to know you um the team is great right you're leveraging the team but at the end of the day it's going to boil down to can i relate to you and can i find common ground with you so i would start off by telling me more about you and then getting into the team does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah um you know just a quick bio where you grew up where you went to school what you're passionate about you know who you love working with what type of clients you know, what your how you treat your clients, like, right, what, what's my all about? What's that short little paragraph that tells me who my is and who I'm getting with my? Okay. Um, the part I want you to work on is explaining the contingencies. That part got a little confusing. Um, especially as a first time buyer, it got confusing because you went out of order you jumped to like the timeline of the escrow so then it made you have to go back to tell me about the contingencies you know what i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend doing that i would just follow the actual presentation the way it is this way when you tell me about the timeline i already knew what the contingencies were see what i'm saying Um, because you said you went from like the three phases of the sale and then you said, let me give you a sample timeline. And then you, you hit contingencies on the timeline. And then you said, I'll go back and tell you what those are about. I, yeah. So then it, it could, it, if I was a first time home buyer, I would have been, I was com getting confused a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. so I would have okay. simplified, simplify that. Just tell me what the contingencies are. And I think just working on a way to explain the contingencies in a simpler form would be really mm -hmm. beneficial. The way that I explain contingencies, I would say, hey, anytime we put a, an offer on a property, there's a thing called contingencies. And basically what these are, these are protective uh, parts of the contract that we have to complete these first in order to move forward with the contract. And if we, we're not able to complete these or satisfy these, then we can renegotiate or we can back out or we can get our deposit back. I would just try to just keep it really simple. And then you can go and say, hey, there's an appraisal one, there's a loan one, and there's you know inspection one. Um, I would keep those simple. Yeah, I would keep those. And this is gonna take some practice, my So just yeah. trying to, learn how to explain those like in a condensed form because it can be overwhelming for a, uh, a client if you're just kind of reading every single thing and telling them like everything about that. Mm -hmm. um, remember on the buyer presentation, they're not necessarily gonna learn and remember everything, right? So you wanna hit the points and then later on when you work together, you're gonna go through those again. So try to keep it surface level on the contingency part. Don't go too crazy with the, with the detail. Um, Avoid, avoid going off on like tangents. This is one of the things I wrote down. 
where you gave like scenarios that weren't part of the presentation, uh, like for contingencies and stuff like that, it, it did, it did overwhelm me a little bit. Like if I was a buyer, cause then it got me thinking about those scenarios and like, do I need those? And do I need to pay out of pocket and like all those things? Um, uh, and that would have been solved simply by just keeping it simple on the contingency part. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just need to find a way to kind of condense it and simplify it. Yeah, because then what happens is um, when you go off on tangents on the contingency, because that's, and that Thomas put a note, uh, I was starting to gloss, gloss over mm -hmm. during the contingencies part. And most buyers are going to gloss over during that part because it's a lot of information. So if we already know that going forward, then we just need to shorten it and just basically give them the bullet points and then let them know that, hey, when we put an offer on the tape on, on a property, we're going to go through all this and we're going to see which ones make sense. If we need them or if we don't need them, we're, it's going to be a case by case when we put an offer. So Mr. Client, I don't want to overwhelm you too much, but just know there's protective things that we can put in the contract and we're going to go over these when it's time to make an offer to see if it makes sense or not for you. And then boom, I would just move on from contingencies. Don't stay with the what ifs and the, if you do this and if you, if you need it today and you don't need it today and people don't need inspections today and they do like, don't, you're, you were going to a territory that would have just confused the, the client and overwhelmed them. Um, okay, last thing and I'm gonna let you go. When you get to the VIP buyer program, oh, yeah. I can <laughs> tell that either, either you weren't too confident or maybe you haven't rehearsed that part or maybe you haven't sold that part enough. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing is when I get to the VIP buyer program, here's what I wrote down. The sales technique is set it up, set up the program before you explain what it is. Get excited about what the program is because your energy kind of dropped during that part. And then I wasn't really like sold on if I needed that or not. Right. So here's what I would do is I would say, okay, um, I'm going to role play this with you. Okay. My, Hey, um, before we go on to the next section, are there any questions you have over the process and what we covered? No, you did a great job. <laughs> okay awesome awesome so the next part of our presentation the last part is what's called the vip buyer program and before i explain this to you let me just tell you this is a program that we're really excited about because this is one of the unique things that we do that most other companies don't do in fact i don't really know any other companies or any other teams out there that do <clears throat> this program and it's something that's unique to us and there's a a ton of benefits um, when you start working with us and you become one of our VIP buyers. Um, so, you know, I, I'm excited to share this with you. And let me just let you know that this thing differentiates us from other, other agents out there. And this is what helps us make our clients more successful so that we can get a home faster with less stress and make sure you get the, the best deal possible. So when we follow this VIP thing, this is actually going to get you a better result than working with any other agent. Does that make sense? My? Yes, it does. Okay. So you end the role play. So you see right there, I did a setup. I set up the stage for presenting the VIP program. I got excited. I stressed the importance. I told you how it's different. So now I have your attention, my, right? And then I go into the bonuses. The bonuses, do not read the bonuses line for line. Just hit mm -hmm. the bullet point. Okay. Ex explain it in your own words because you were reading some of it line for line and then you fumbled a couple so i would just say bonus number one right home warranty let me tell you why a home warranty is important when you work with us you're going to get a home warranty we're going to guarantee that either we're going to get the seller to pay for it or we're going to pay for it this is going to protect you in case you have any repairs that pop up in the first year it's like a special insurance that you're going to get working with us bonus number two sell for free guarantee this is different. No other agents do this. If you're not satisfied with your home in the first 12 months, we'll sell it for free. We won't charge you our listing commission, um, you know, and we'll make sure you get out of that home and get into a better home. Bonus number, whatever, number three, uh, 
I forgot what's the other bonus. Um, you don't pay us anything, right? You don't pay us no commission up front. Uh, that's the great thing is we negotiate our commission with the seller. You're not, you know, paying anything to us up front, anything like that. We do all these services for you and the seller pays us. Um, the only administrative cost that you're going to see with us is a 995 administrative fee that covers some of the internal processing of your documents. That's part of your closing costs. We have an awesome team on that end, the admin team who does all kinds of stuff to make sure the contract's moving. And that you only that only gets added on to your closing costs at the end. There's nothing up front. Boom. The great thing is you can cancel anytime. There's no obligation. If I'm not doing my job, you just let me know. Give me an opportunity to correct it. If I can't correct it, you're out of the contract. And actually, let me show you our cancellation guarantee form. It's right here. If you decide you don't want to work with me anymore, just sign that send it over to me and you don't owe me anything. Does that make sense, Mike? Yes. So what I wanna show you guys is I made it exciting. I'm making it confident, right? I'm sounding confident and I'm summarizing and hitting all the points and, and delivering it with excitement. And the transition from there is now you gotta close them, right? So. My, I'm excited to work with you. Thank you so much for showing up today. Now we get to do the fun part. We get to go schedule a time to go look at homes, right? Let me pull up my calendar and then I would pull up my calendar right there. And I'll say, um, I'm gonna go ahead and send this to you via DocuSign right now. Go ahead and pull it up. Just go ahead and sign, you know, just to, to confirm that we're gonna go work together and see some homes. And then let me look at my calendar. Do you have some time on Saturday or Sunday to look at houses? Boom, let's go ahead and get that going. And you see, I didn't make the signature like a big deal at all, right? I just, I carried it forward with the excitement of let's work together. Thank you very much. I'm excited. Let's schedule a time to go look at homes, right? Because if you start like backpedaling and sounding like you're nervous and you're not sure, then you made the client nervous and unsure if they should sign it. Mm -hmm. so your energy the energy you had throughout the whole presentation you need to have just as much energy and confidence on the last part of it and that's how you close it and that's how you make them sign and you and then you focus on the next step which is let's go see some homes i'm excited i'm really excited let's go see some homes all right i know it's a lot of info guys thank you guys for for hanging in there but i think this is very valuable for you guys today um, are there any questions before we wrap this up? I have a question. Yes. Um, you mentioned, or you asked a question about like, do you have to use Melissa or, or TC? What would you answer? Or how would you answer that? Well, the only reason I, I asked you that was because the way you explained it, you didn't sound confident. You made it sound uh, like an additional cost. So I did that uh -huh. on purpose. I see. You made it sound like you made it sound like an optional thing. Mm. So if when you explain it the way I I just explained it to you, when you just say, hey, this is part of what we do, this is part of how we work, then there's no option. Right? Okay. But, but when you said, hey, we have Melissa and all this, and she protects your interest, like don't say any of that. Just say we have an awesome admin team. You know, this covers the internal processing of your documents. You pay this at close of escrow. This is how we work. This is how we ensure the best service, the best results. So okay. it, it was, a. Uh, I only said that because of how you were presenting it. Go ahead, Dewey. What if a client asks something that I don't know how to answer? How do I respond to it? Uh, how do you think you should respond? Uh, what I do at Apple before is if you don't know something, you usually say, uh, let me, let, let's find out. And then you Google it or let's find out. Or you ask uh, someone who do know uh, and then get back to them at a later time. Would that work here too? Or? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so number, number one is acknowledge, acknowledge the question. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that you hear them, you understand them and say, hey, you know what? That's a great question. Um, I want to make sure I give you the right answer for that one. So I'm going to go ahead and consult with my partner. Um, 
because that's that's a great question. That's a little higher level than I want to make sure I, I consult with my partner and then I'll get back to you um, after this presentation with the answer on that one. Okay, sounds good. And that's it. And then you go find the answer and you come back and you give them the answer. And just say, hey, uh, I don't want to, I want to make sure I don't give you the wrong answer. So let me go ahead and double check. I think I know the answer, but I want to double check and I'm going to get back to you with the, to make sure it's the right answer. And then make sure you go find out and you <laughs> make sure you call them back. Because if you don't and you don't write it down, you're going to lose credibility with the client. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that answer your question? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Any other questions before we wrap up, guys? All right. Give it up one more time for Mai. Good job, Mai. Great job. Uh, Mai, just FYI, FYI, those corrections that I told you, you should be able to make those immediately and you're ready to start doing presentations on your own. You don't need a senior agent no more. You need to do presentations on your own now. Like you got it. You got 90. I know I gave you like detailed uh, criticism, but that's so you can learn. That's so you can get better. But you got 95% of everything correct, right? So it's time. No more, no more senior agents, nothing like that. Like you need to start doing these on your own. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text you these notes. You're going to watch this video and save it. So if you need to go back to this section, but you're ready to go. Oh. That makes me nervous. <laughs> okay. Uh, you just got to do it. It's just repetition, right? Like, don't be afraid to mess up. Just give it your all. Give it your best and just learn. That's it. You're ready to go. No more training wheels. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Let's go. Later, guys. <laughs>